June is graduation time for thousands of college students on campuses throughout the United States. It's a day marked by solemn processions and lasting memories. But it is the colorful June week festivities at the three service academies that capture the imagination of the entire country. The United States Military Academy at West Point is the oldest of the country's military schools, founded on the banks of the Hudson River in 1802. Over the years, many buildings have been added to serve the needs of the growing student body. There were only two men in the first graduating class. Today, the number is over 500. In 1845, the Naval Academy first appeared on the banks of the Severn River in Annapolis. For over a century, the two academies successfully fulfilled their task of training officers to lead America's armies and navies. Then, in 1958, a new school was built to train officers, this time for leadership in the expanding age of aerospace, the glass, aluminum, and marble structures of the Air Force Academy high in the Rocky Mountains are as modern as the spacecraft of our time. Life in the three academies begins in the same way. Each summer, the new recruits who have all passed the most rigorous examinations arrive for the stiff indoctrination course. They're on their way. The first order of business is to learn to march. The quick, precise step soon becomes second nature to the cadet, who must march instead of walk between classes. The new cadet must learn to live and work under the pressure of military discipline. His academic schedule is far more intense than at a civilian university. Mathematics, science, engineering, the social sciences and humanities are studied 12 hours a day 11 months a year. He must become acquainted with the tools of his profession, from the rifle to the jet fighter. He must become acquainted with the combat conditions under which he will lead future troops. But most important of all, whether in sports, where he develops strength, agility, and a competitive spirit, or in the classroom, the cadet is always being trained for leadership. But somehow, the cadet manages to find time for an active social life and enjoys events filled with the spirit and camaraderie of life at the academies. The friendly rivalry between Army and Navy brings out great crowds of cadets and civilians to cheer their favorite teams. To the first classmen, four years have sped by. Each advance in rank has brought him greater understanding and knowledge. He has worked hard. To have achieved his goal is a great accomplishment. He knows the true meaning of duty and honor and is ready to take up the responsibilities of his career as an officer in the service of his country. At last, his studies have ended. The lights go out on his academy years. The great day of graduation has come. General MacArthur, a famous graduate and former superintendent of West Point, speaks to the class of 33 on the meaning and spirit of this day. The progress of the man's life is punctuated by a series of culminations of which for you today is one. That spirit is a guarantee of fortitude, of vigor, 
of victory. Young comrades in arms, happy landings, and God be with you. Graduation is a time to reflect on the past and future, but it is also a time to celebrate. June week, which precedes graduation day, is filled with colorful events, events shared by relatives, girlfriends, and fiancés. Flirtation walk at West Point is the scene of many a quiet rendezvous. There are athletic events as well, both traditional and unique, such as the Middies' ancient custom of trying to bring down a cap from the top of a greased pole. Formal and informal dances are an important part of June week. At Annapolis, the midshipmen and their dates continue the 40-year-old ritual of the ring dance. The girl dips the class ring in the waters from the seven seas. Standing under a large replica, the engaged couple exchange rings. The ceremony is sealed with a kiss. Navy's color parade began just after the Civil War. A few years later, it became traditional for a girl selected by the leader of the highest rated brigade to present the colors. Sylvanus Thayer is remembered as the father of West Point. In the early 19th century, he set down the principles by which the academy is still run. Each June week, old grads return and join the cadets to honor his memory. Each of the academies has many heroes of the past and present, illustrious former graduates from whom the cadet draws inspiration and guidance. Ulysses Grant, William Tecumseh Sherman, Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, Black Jack Pershing, Bull Halsey, Omar Bradley, Ernest King, Hoyt Vandenberg, Chester Nimitz, Nathan Twining, Dwight Eisenhower, Maxwell Taylor. What better time than graduation to display the precision and skill which has made cadet marching famous across the country. The dress parades are dramatic highlights for cadets and visitors. Remember how they looked when they started. Graduation day arrives at last. Distinguished leaders take part in the ceremony which honors the cadet's achievement. After all the diplomas have been received, the cadets let loose. Even the lowest midshipman, the anchorman, seems to enjoy his dubious honor. From Denver to Annapolis to West Point, the story is the same. From the highest honor man on down, it's hats in the air. They've made it at last. They're United States officers. There are special rewards for some of the graduates who take on other responsibilities after a colorful military wedding. Their studies are over. The excitement of June week has ended. The new officers begin their careers in a lifetime of service to their country and march into history. In future years, they will often think back 
on these happy days.